Tennessee-born Keon Johnson stayed home to play for the Volunteers and in his freshman season did enough to be considered a top pick in this year's NBA draft. This is Florence Ceiling. Let's break him down. As a five-star prospect in high school, Keon Johnson turned down prestigious offers from other universities to stay home and play for Tennessee under coach Rick Barnes. Johnson rapidly became must-see TV because of his explosive athleticism, all while showing some flashes of ball handling and creativity. But his potential extends to both ends of the floor. Johnson is 6 foot 5, 186 pounds with a 6 foot 8 wingspan. His upside as a two-way guard is legit, and there are not many better defensive prospects than Johnson in his draft class. Let's start with what Keon Johnson is already great at, making the most out of transition opportunities. Johnson is a blur in the open court, where his athleticism really shines through. He is extremely fast as a straight-line athlete, able to get up and down the floor in a matter of seconds while maintaining his dribble and finishing strong at the basket. Johnson should adapt to this part of NBA basketball from day one. He will be greatly benefited by the increased pace and spacing of the NBA, as well as the up and down nature that is just not always there at the college level. Like I said, Johnson will be an instant transition threat. He makes his fast break game look simple, but Johnson actually tosses in some little things that make him even harder to stop. To start, he has the athleticism and body control to manipulate his limbs and come up with tough finishes, such as here against Auburn and Missouri. Not only that, but Johnson is very good at changing speeds. This is not something that I noticed at first because Johnson does it really subtly. He will have a tiny hesitation move before exploding to the basket or slow down for the briefest of seconds to give himself a better chance at finishing. As you can probably tell, I like when Johnson gets downhill especially against a defense that is not totally set. When Johnson gets rolling towards the basket, he is hard to stop. The Tennessee guard is equipped with a really strong first step, and his handle is good enough to usually get him to where he wants to be. Johnson is big enough to get past smaller guards and quick enough to be a mismatch on bigs. I expect Johnson's driving game to be accentuated even more in the NBA. One, because the spacing at the next level is simply better. And two, as I will explain later, I have some concerns about Tennessee's system in regards to making direct NBA projections. However, there is still one significant improvement area for Johnson in the open court. He can sometimes really struggle to finish through contact and or over length. This is held against other prospects like BJ Boston or Zaire Williams, so the same should apply for Johnson. Johnson remains incredibly skinny at 186 pounds, so while he can get to the basket whenever he wants, he is still not comfortable finishing through traffic. Johnson's room for growth with this will narrow as he gets stronger in the NBA, but it is something to work on for sure. He drew free throws at a decent rate, but I feel that Johnson could take even more if he played tougher and with more intent to just take his drive through the opponent's chest. Too often, Johnson shrinks and leans away from contact. In a slower, half-court setting, Johnson is probably going to bring two things to the table, beginning with his mid-range jumper. Even if you were to only watch one of Johnson's games, you will immediately notice that he loves this shot. Johnson wants to operate inside the three-point line, and likes to get into this pull-up in rhythm. He is pretty smooth with this shot. Johnson can get into it after one or two dribbles when attacking a closeout, or rise into this jumper after getting into a flow using some hang dribbles. Johnson has great balance on this pull-up, and his footwork should be commended. I will break down his shot selection a bit later, but Johnson is never rushed and is always composed when shooting from around the foul line. Almost 42% of his shots were two-pointers, so this is clearly Johnson's bread and butter. Another shot that he really enjoys is this turnaround two deep in the paint. Like I said, Johnson will do most of his work from two-point range. He has a high release point that is tough to bother, so that makes it easy for Johnson to create his own shot in the post, even though he is not very physical. When this shot is falling, it looks great. This was on full display against Kentucky, as Tennessee constantly ran cross screens to get Johnson the ball in the low post and let him get to work. Kentucky had little answer for Johnson, who had his highest scoring game of the season that night. A lot of Johnson's 27 points came in this manner. However, I think that Johnson would really benefit from diversifying his offensive game. Like I mentioned, he wants to live in the mid-range, and so far, he has been decent at doing so. 
Johnson made around 41% of his two-point jumpers, which is a pretty solid figure for a college freshman. He was also creating the vast majority of these shots. Only 26% were assisted. Still, there will be nights where this shot does not fall. It sometimes sounds like I am against mid-range jumpers in my videos, but I'm really not. I think that shot can be very valuable in tight situations, such as the playoffs, but it is a bit antiquated as a go-to, and that is what it is for Johnson right now. Additionally, for reasons that I will break down shortly, I am not convinced that Johnson will be as effective shooting from the mid-range at the NBA level. But before that, let's quickly go back to his work in the post. Again, this is a valuable tool in a close playoff game for instance, where the action has slowed down and your team needs a bucket. But generally speaking, the NBA doesn't really look for this shot profile anymore unless you are one of the best players in the league. So even if Johnson can make this shot, it does not mean that he has to take it. Living off tough, contested fadeaways is a tough ask for anyone, and not really a recipe for success. One thing I quickly want to touch on are jump stops. This is a problem that Johnson sometimes encountered, but I think it's something coached at Tennessee rather than something specific to him. A jump stop can be a great tool, but it seems like Tennessee coaches this into players to a strange degree. I say this because I noticed it with Jaden Springer as well. Johnson will sometimes be so intent on jump stopping into his fallaway jumper that it ends up not being effective at all. For instance, here against Cincinnati. I noted a few moments ago that I'm not sure Johnson's mid-range shooting will even translate to the NBA in the same way that it worked at the college level. Some of this is just because he is a really poor three-point shooter. Johnson made just 27% of his threes in his freshman year. He was not a willing shooter either, taking just 48 threes all season. That small sample size may once again go back to how Tennessee plays, as Jaden Springer only shot 46 threes. Still, Johnson made just 70% of his free throws, which is poor for a guard and does not bode well for his shot. You may be thinking, well, Johnson can just take a few steps inside and take his preferred mid-range. That is true, but NBA teams want real floor spacers nowadays. If you are going to reduce the spacing on the floor by not adding outside shooting, your chances of becoming a great player drastically go down. On top of that, if Johnson does not improve his 3-point shooting, then that will take away his dangerous driving game, especially at first as he gets adjusted to the physicality of the NBA. It's also interesting to me that Johnson's ability to create his own shot in the mid-range has not translated at all to beyond the arc. All of Johnson's 3-pointers were assisted, but just to be clear, it's not like he was a great spot-up shooter. Now, I'm not asking him to create and make his own threes, but making the easy ones should be considered an urgent step in his development. However, I believe Johnson can add value off the ball, and I expect that this will be tapped into once he makes it to the NBA. Johnson is impactful getting to the basket even when the ball is in someone else's hands. He showed signs of being a willing and capable cutter, which to some extent will help make up for his three-point shooting deficiencies. I also enjoyed when Tennessee had Johnson coming off screens towards the basket. These are the types of dynamic actions that I see him fitting into at the next level. I liked this play in particular, with Johnson using the back screen to get up for the lob. It is common, but effective. Because Johnson can play above the rim, I also think that he will one day be a good offensive rebounder for his position. I say one day because despite these clips, Johnson did not show these flashes until the tail end of the season. Over his first 18 games, Johnson barely averaged over half an offensive rebound per game, but in his last 9 games, he was snatching 2 offensive boards a night. That is an impressive shift, and I hope to see Johnson continue to crash the glass going forward. Johnson can either get the ball and go up himself, such as here against Alabama, or he can keep it alive to create second chance opportunities for his team such as here versus Kentucky and then Auburn. Certainly, he has the means to make a difference in this department with his bounciness, long arms, and instincts for the ball. Keeping in mind that Tennessee plays with many ball handlers at once, I think Johnson showed enough during his year there to prove that he has some upside when it comes to passing. Johnson will not be a primary ball handler upon entering the NBA, but I think he has enough chops to eventually be a guy who you can really trust to make decisions. Johnson had 71 turnovers to 67 assists, which is obviously an improvable number, but I am more focused on the flashes. He has decent court vision and can make the right reads, such as finding his bigs or generating good looks from the three-point line. Johnson's playmaking was more evident towards the end of his freshman season, when he played with the ball in his hands a lot more. 
I know that Johnson has more turnovers than he has assists, but I'm not overly worried. A lot of those turnovers came when he was looking for his own shot, rather than trying to facilitate. One thing I wish we had gotten more of was Johnson playing in the pick and roll. However, Tennessee puts more of an emphasis on post-ups, as we can see here. So we didn't really get to see what Johnson can do. Johnson stands out big time on the defensive end of the floor, and he does this in many ways, starting with his on-ball defense. There are few prospects in this year's draft class that have better defensive potential than the Tennessee guard. Combined with what he has shown on attack, that gives Johnson really appealing two-way potential. Johnson is a vicious defender. He has no problem shadowing the attacker's movements and staying with them every step of the way. We often hear that defense is all about trying. That's not exactly true. Otherwise, every NBA player could stand the chance of being a great defender. But one thing you can never do is blame Johnson for not putting in maximum effort. When you put that hard work together with Johnson's lateral quickness, willingness to get down in a stance, and ability to bother his attacker using his long arms, you get a fantastic defender. Johnson gobbles up opponents. He plays through contact, flips his hips, forces his opponents into tough shots, and really, he is just someone you do not want guarding you. The thing about Johnson is, he's also a great defender off the ball. The first thing he does to achieve this is just always staying engaged. Johnson is typically not one to ball watch or fall asleep on plays. Yes, he knows where the ball is and where it's going, but he is also always aware of where his defensive assignment is. Johnson excels at chasing and staying attached. He does not give up on plays, as we can see here, against Colorado. Johnson denies the handoff twice and does such a great job at harassing the attacker that he almost forces the turnover. Or here, against Kentucky, as they want to get a shot for BJ Boston off the screen, but Johnson just smothers him. Secondly, Johnson is a wonderful helper. He knows when to poke himself into a play and then do just that, poke the ball away. Johnson comes up with steals by being aware of how and when to use his active hands. If you are close to him, then you better take good care of the ball, otherwise Johnson is relentless. Watch here against Alabama as Johnson notices just one mishandle and rips the ball away from the Crimson Tide. This seems simple, but not many do it as well and as consistently as Johnson. He does this again here against Florida, just inching away from his man at the perfect time to get the steal. All of this is not to declare that Johnson is a flawless defender. He is only 19 years old and will have lapses from time to time. But the important thing is that those rarely happen to him. Johnson had an iffy game on D against Alabama for instance, getting caught ball watching a few times or just looking lost. Maybe he will miss his rotation as well, or he will give up a rebound and a bad foul once in a while. But make no mistake about it, Johnson already has the makings of a very good NBA defender. I can definitely understand the appeal of Keon Johnson. He is a guard who has the ability and potential to defend wings, who moves like a wing as well, and who is as explosive as you can get in a prospect. Johnson should be dangerous from day one in the NBA because of his transition game and athleticism. He has the ability to affect things on the offensive glass, and I think he will get plenty of joy just cutting and slashing to the basket. However, what he needs the most work on is his jump shot. I don't think that Keon Johnson's jump shot looks broken or anything like that, but I do have a problem with his shot profile and his numbers from the three-point line. If Johnson is taking most of his shots from the mid-range or out of the post, I don't think that is a viable recipe for NBA success. That, coupled with his poor three-point percentage, does make me worry about Johnson's offensive game. Although in the long term, I do think that everything will be fine once he makes it to the NBA and he is coached to take different shots. I don't think that Johnson's shot is broken, I don't think that his jumper is flawed, but his shot selection definitely is. And again, that may go back to how Tennessee plays. But on defense, I really like Johnson's potential. He has the ability to keep up with guards, he can slide to deny drives, he can make an impact on the glass, and he can definitely be impactful as a help defender, which is where I think that a lot of his greatness on that end of the floor has come this freshman season. Overall, when you have a 6'5 guy with elite athleticism, 
who can be really explosive, who is dangerous in the open court, whose jumper has potential even though it needs some work. Well, I think that you have a definite two-way guy with the potential to be a lottery pick. Of course, that's already a given. Now, it's just a matter of how high Johnson goes. Do I think that he's worthy of being a top six pick? Maybe, maybe after the top five, everything gets a lot muddier. But I do think that Johnson definitely belongs in the top 10 picture. And if everything goes according to plan, he might go as high as six. As always, if you enjoyed the video, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to leave a comment, make sure to leave a like, tell me what you think of Keon Johnson. And if you enjoy the channel, make sure to subscribe. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.